Hey guys, it's Raw Cubs, and boy do I have one for you today. I've just gone through and done the entire recording and realised I didn't click record. So this is a follow-up video from yesterday. I released a video on target farming. I'm going to briefly go over it again today because it seems a lot of people don't know about this amazing fact. I've had a lot of feedback wanting to know more and that's why we're doing this video. Did you know you're farming wrong? Let's take the chill boots. You're really pushing that treat of whispers, right? How about the Helltide chests where you get in your mystery chests and your boot chests? You're pushing the nightmare dungeons going as high as you can? Would you be surprised if I tell you that all those things are wrong? This is going to blow your mind. How do you do it? It's called Monster Families. And that's something a Diablo, not a corny show on Netflix. If you don't know about this method, or if you just want to show some love, drop a subscription as it really helps out the channel. So what are Monster Families? Well, monster families are the type of monsters in the game. Bandits, beasts, cannibals, cultists, and so on. Well, all those monster types actually have an increased drop chance of a certain item. This was initially announced in the 2019 panel of BlizzCon, and then never re-mentioned. People totally forgot about it. Maxwell did release a document here, but we're going to go into a bit more depth. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the types of enemies, what they drop, and the best place to farm each individual enemy type. So for example, if you want the chill boots, we'll discuss the best type of mob, which is the drowned, the best location that you can farm that enemy in, and how to do it as a team. Unfortunately, there is no amulet or rings from these uh, enemies, uh, so we are going to be stuck with the conventional methods. However, I wouldn't. Um, it would be unfair for me to forget I recently just bought a level 92 perfectly rolled crit crit vulnerable uh, maximum mana ring from the vendor for 600,000. Check your vendors once an hour. There's no harm and all the vendors in every town give the same items. So it doesn't matter where you are, just check the vendor and go from there. Now let's look at the mob types and the items. Again. So, the mischievous bandits. That's the bandits in the game will drop you an increased amount of daggers and maces. When I say an increased amount, I am talking five to six times the amount. So that means if a normal enemy such as a beast would drop one mace every ten enemies, as an example, bandits would drop six maces every ten enemies. They are six times more likely on average. Beasts are going to drop you chests, crossbows and swords from the savage beasts. Cannibals, the barbarous cannibals, will drop you a two-handed axe, an axe and a helm. The Ritualistic Cultists will uh, drop you daggers and helms. The Drowned Horde, there they are, will drop you boots, pants, two-handed maces and scythes. The Fallen, the Treacherous Fallen, will drop you axe and staves. Because it just says staves, it is from, it's the Druid Staff. The, uh, which, uh, the sorcerer is called Two-Handed Staff. Ghosts will drop you bows and wands. Goatmen will drop you two-handed axes, axes, sorcerers as two-handed staves and totems. Skeletons will drop you crossbows, shields and swords. Snakes, also known as the Nangari, will drop two-handed pole arms and swords. And spiders will drop chests, focus, gloves and two-handed swords. The Unholy Vampires will drop bows, 200 swords and wands, but we're going to forget about them. We'll talk about them a little bit, but it's not the best. Anyway, what does all this mean? Well, this means if you're wanting wands, you should be farming ghosts, as we saw up top, uh, for wands, or you should be farming vampires. Now, you want to target them, and the chance of dropping wands increased massively, as I've said. Same as uniques, if you're wanting to find a unique wand, you would farm ghosts or vampires. Meaning, you want to farm the dungeon with the highest density of that mob type. And that's why this video is a bit longer, because we're going to go through each one of those dungeons. I've sat there with my team and we've gone through all 115 dungeons to find the best one. Now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put all the mob families in a list in a pinned comment with what they drop. So you know what mob you're looking for. You can go through the monster list and you can go, okay, um, a fallen, I want a, st I want a druid, stave, go, it's the fallen. You're then going to come back to the video and hear whoever I said the fallen is for. That might not be for everybody and I might not make everyone happy with that. And if, I have, if, if you're not happy with the way I'm doing it, tell me all about it in the comments. Or more importantly, if you think you found a better spot than the one I'm saying, feel free to correct me in the comments. 
But this has moved on to working as a group. Guys, you have a chat, you have a whole comment section here. In this video, I might get a thousand views, might get two thousand views. Uh, I mean, my yesterday's video got twenty two thousand views. That means you've got one, two, twenty two thousand more people in the chat where you can group up with them and farm boots. So, if all you want to chill boots, get a group of four years and then it'll just make farming that much quicker. Work together, guys. Now, the best place to farm for the bandits are going to be on this interactive map in a place called Ulder's Cave. Yeah, we're starting off nice and easy. One I'm sure you're all more than familiar with. It's located in Kedjistan, just to the southwest. And uh, you will go through and just cleave it all the way to the end. It's the best place to find bandits by far for your daggers and maces. Now, for your beasts, you're wanting to go up to Alder... Oh, uh, higher up than this. You're wanting to go to Alderwood. Now, Alderwood is in Scoresglen, in the northeast part of the map. It's filled with werewolves, and they actually fall under the beast category. It'll 100% be the best spot for farming them, and it's in Scoresglen between Korbak and the Shrouded Moors. Now, for cannibals, this one here, there's quite a few different options, but I like to go for the Blood-Soaked Crag. It's the best place to farm cannibals, and personally, I'm not a fan of farming them, even after Shaker was rumoured to have dropped there. It's located in the Dried Steps, just east of the Fields of Hatred PvP zone. So, personally, for Helms, I instead of pouring for the cannibals, I actually push for cultists. But, on that note, cultists, you know exactly where we're going here. It's the Cultist Refuge. It's one of the quickest dungeons to claim in Diablo 4. It's located in the west of Fractured Peaks, just west of Kivishad. It has three easy objectives, no boss encounters, and a handful of elite packs. It's a really good spot. It's actually quite good for experience, too. Now, the Drowned are in a place you know all too well. It's in the ruins of Eridu. Ruins of Eridu. No, we'll get that in the end. Ruins of Eridu. Post nerf, this is still the location I would recommend for people to farm the Drowned in. Like the Beasts, which are a bit more of a red uh, mob type, so are the Drowned. But even after nerf, in, or Eridu provides enough coverage to make it worthwhile. Just this time, guys. Maybe clear the whole thing? Anyway, it's found in Hawazar. And as you already know, it's just west of Vieira's. Now, the Fallen are a baseline in this game. They're bloody everywhere. But if again, if I was to pick one location that I know that they're in, I would pick the Ruins of Eridu again. It's the second most popular mob type in the dungeon. And we know where it is. We know it's easy to do. And personally, that's where I would go. Now, for the Ghosts, they are in the walls, the floors. They can one hit you off the map, oh, but that wasn't the point. They're located quite densely inside of a place called Earthen Wound. Now, a good thing about this place, it's a cave, meaning when they spawn, they are right on top of you, not behind locked doors, and they're all nice and clumped up so you can just jump through them and murder them all. It's a pretty linear dungeon as well. As soon as you get to the end, reset and away you go. Now, for Goatmen, with the nerfs of Champion's Demise, it would still be the best place to farm if it wasn't for Hoarfrost Demise. Hoarfrost is ridiculous. You can find it in Fractured Peaks, just north of a Bear Tribe Refuge. As you can see on the map, it's a great little farming spot and is one of my favourite experienced farming spots as well, for those who don't know. Now, Skeletons are a bit of a problem. They're like Fallen. They are more of a secondary enemy, not a front line in any dungeon, really. They are in Hoarfrost Demise. And it, it's pretty dense in there. Personally, I actually preferred inside of Black Asylum. Now, they're in here with some ghosts, and it's not the nicest of dungeons. But it is the only mob you that you can target farm for shields, so good luck to the necromancers. If, you want, if you're getting a bit sick of Black Asylum, you can go to Hoarfrost. Or you can actually travel up and go to Cordragan Barracks. As you can see, it's greyed out because we're going to be talking about that one a little bit later again. However, the second half of this dungeon is full of skeletons. So, but it does mean you have to clear the first part out soon. At yeah, first. Next, we've got the Nagari, the snakes. They are actually right next to where Ruins of Eridu are. They are in the Shadowed Plunge. It's a, a dungeon that's only unlocked after you complete the Vieres or Stronghold. And 
There's not really much to say about it. It's a densely packed dungeon. War divides in it, which spawns Nangari bosses at the end, to show you get the most possible drops. Um, yeah, I farmed it quite a bit earlier in the uh, oh, the release because of a couple of different glitches that were there. But that's pretty much your best place for the snakes. The snakes don't have a huge amount of locations. Now for spiders, everybody knows I would normally recommend Sirocco uh, Caverns. But Sirocco Caverns has just been nerfed for loot, unfortunately. So well, I'm waiting for the notification to come up on the hotfix piles, but I'm, I, I used to farm it for loot and the items, we used to get roughly uh, 26 items a drop over the space of 100 runs and we're down to like 13 or 14, it's been almost halved. So because of it, for spiders, the best chance you've got is going to be blind barrows. You all knew that was coming. It's just east of, Zar just east of Zarbinet in Hawazar. Sadly, since the nerf the drops, as I've said, this is going to be the highest. I'm not a fan of the location. I don't like blind burrows, for those who know me. I really don't like it. But again, it's just to the west of Zarbinet. Now, for vampires, we're going back up to the... Oh, uh, well, back up here. Uh, Core Dragon Barracks. As I was talking about the skeletons in the second half, um, it's a pain to farm. Vampires in general just make for a long, annoying mob type. If you're level 100 like me and have gear, yes, we just one-hit them. But as a majority, if you're still gearing up and you've still got low gear, it's not the most fun. Good thing with vampires is if you want two-handed swords, go spiders. If you want bows or wands, go ghosts. Vampires are skippable entirely. But if you do want to go, it's to the north of Fracture Peak, just north of Kivishad. Now, I hope this made sense. So, for the drowned best spot is in Ruins of Eridu, meaning if you're wanting to farm the chill boots, you would farm that dungeon repeatedly until you drop them. Now, that's everything we need to go through. If you like what you see, don't hesitate to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. And until next time, Cubs, you know it. Peace.